woman who plays a child in the Western world. She is the author of 31 cookbooks, including the Complete Asian Cookbook, which sells worldwide in four languages, English, Dutch, French, and German. Her Encyclopedia of Asian Food won the Silver Ladle in the World Food Media Awards and was nominated as one of the three best international cookbooks by the Julia Child Cookbook Awards in the United States. However, her most prized accolades are letters from users of her cookbooks thanking her for her recipes which never fail. I think that is just amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the lovely Charmaine Solomon. Give her a big round of applause. <laughs> For an introduction like that, I'll keep coming back. <laughs> Thank you all for being here. Good morning. This is my daughter, Deborah. Good morning. And uh, she's my assistant. I've been training her for years and years. I'm glad you didn't say how many years. It's a um, bit too long. I don't want to admit to it. Now, I'm going to start off today by putting the fact maybe why it's on the book. Because after it's been, start the next book after it's so, And then, I'm going to ask Debbie to make her a dessert, which you might not have the recipe for because it's a bit of an afterthought, but it is so good and so easy that to get your pens or pencils ready, I'm sure you'll want to write it down. And then I'll come back and make the butter chicken and the yogurt writer. So, um, first of all, get the rice on. Now, I just want to give you some very useful information because we don't always cook five cups or, or in this case, two and a half cups of rice. I realize that you've got to make it work for you and how many people you cook for. And we've got two and a half cups or 500 grams of rice. I like to speak of it in cups because then I give this rule that for the first cup of rice, you use two cups of water. And for every subsequent cup of rice, you use one and a half cups of water. And if you measure your rice and your water carefully, you will never ever have a stickiness or rice that's not properly cooked. So if you cook rice a lot and you don't, I'm not familiar with those measurements, please make a note of them. They will serve you well. Now, I'm going to um, need some hot water, Debbie. So I put, the, I put the rice in, that's 500 grams, or one and a half cups. You've done the calculations, how much water have the calculation, have? four cups. Mm -hmm. Would you like hot or cold water? Hot, hot water, yeah. I like but you can do this in a rice cooker, as long as you add cold water to start it. But because I'm adding some spices to it, and in this case it's my Cashmere marinade, which has got all the fragrant spices, but absolutely no chili, no hot spices. So it's ideal for sort of seasoning the rice and also for children who might not have their taste but ready for hot stuff here. The cashmere marinade. And um, somewhere in your folders, there's a list of shops that stock them the Charmin Solomon brand. I'm going to dissolve two tablespoons of the cashmere marinade in the water to make sure it goes all the way through. And we're going to also add some stock powder. Because it's nice if you can do this with stock. If you don't have stock, just add a little extra salt. And if you don't want to add um you can add salt because there's a little bit of salt in the marinade but you probably need a bit more for that rice. Rice yeah. absorbs all the saltiness so you probably need to add a couple of teaspoons of salt. Oops. I'll just get this done for you. I've had to... Thank you. It's working beautifully today. Yes, yesterday we had a few doubts about which one was the right knob to turn. By the time you leave on, you know, backwards. Put a spoonful of stock powder into that. So that you'd use about a teaspoon of salt per cup of rice, normally. Yes. Which makes people faint with horror. A level teaspoon of salt to each cup of rice. <coughs> they look at me like just salt is a four-letter word. Well, it might be without it. 
You don't need any paper. Even if it's just plain boiled rice or anything, you need it. So we bring that to the boil. Mm -hmm. And like Adanasi Thomas, you add them up now. And you can use this afterwards. Right? As soon as it comes to the boil, put the lid on, turn the heat as low as it will go, and leave it. Don't even think of stirring it. Because you just have to time it. 20 minutes and it will be perfectly done. Those are for the garnish of the yeah. I think that's what makes this dish really very attractive, is that it is a pilau style result without having to go into the trouble of um, cutting and, and cooking onions and garlic to start with. But all the shortcuts have um, been taken for you and yet you get a very good result. I mean, I've been cooking this for 30, 40 years and it would be just realised that many people don't have the time of the internet cut and chop and fry the onions and the garlic and um, so I've done it for them. And then you have to have cardamom, cloves, cinnamon to give the lovely spicy fragrance. Well, I had people in my cooking classes saying, we don't have time to do all that. Help us. So I decided to help them. But after writing cookbooks for more than 30 years, I've now got a stranger of spice blends and curry paste and marinades, which means that somebody can come home from work at 5 o'clock and have a meal on the table by 7, or they can leave the office at 5 o'clock. You only need, this is why I say start with the rice, because that will definitely take 20 minutes to 25 minutes to be done. And I'm just going to light up the left um, stove now, because...